If you remember, I created a fab or floating action button tutorial, actually a whole set of tutorials that was maybe two years ago. Well, that's pretty old now. We have an update and the update is super simple. That's coming up in this video. Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Alex, I'm from nativescripting.com. NativeScripting.com is where I publish a lot of the advanced and intermediate NativeScript related courses on Angular with NativeScript, Vue with NativeScript, and NativeScript Core. You can pick and choose the courses you want over there, and there's even bundles to get a discount if you buy a bunch of courses together. Also, there's a discount code down in the description below, so check that out. And if you're new here, consider subscribing to this channel so you can get tips, tricks, and tutorials about NativeScript and click the little bell button so you don't miss any of those. I've got a lot of animation tutorials coming up, including the one coming out later this week, where we take this fab button that we're about to build and we're gonna animate it to create a modal page out of it. So a fab is gonna grow, create a modal page, and then shrink back down. That's gonna be really cool coming out later this week. So we'll make sure you subscribe to get that. Also, stay to the end of the video. I'm gonna read some of your comments right here. Thanks for posting those comments, folks. I really appreciate that. And keep them coming. Let me know down in the comments below what kind of animation tutorials you wanna see. I know you love animation tutorials, so give me some ideas here. Post them down in the comments below. If you take a look at the videos that I've been creating here, you'll see that I'll take some of your comments and actually create the tutorials on how to do this stuff in NativeScript. So thanks a lot for those. All right, let's talk about the elephant in the room. Well, it's not really an elephant. It's the fab or the floating action button. So floating elephant. All right, I'm not good at analogies today. I don't know why. Maybe I need more coffee. I'm going to show you how to create a custom fab here without using any third party libraries. We're just going to be using CSS and the widgets that already come in native script, the layouts and the labels and so on. This is inspired by a demo that Carlos Cabral made on the native script marketplace. But instead of using view here, we're going to be looking at native script core because as an example, a native script core can actually be easily transferred into native script with Angular and native script with Vue. But if you want to take a look at an example using native script Vue specifically, check out the native script marketplace at market.nativescript.org and look at the samples over there. There's some really good stuff. All right, so I'm going to show you how to build this from scratch. And I'm even going to show you a simpler method than Carlos shows for the actual icon in the middle of the floating action button. You'll see that coming up shortly. So without further ado, Let's get into it. I've scaffolded out an application in NativeScript Core here, and I've plopped down a list just so that we're not starting completely from scratch. I already have a list going here, and I have it running in iOS simulator and Android emulator. Let's take a look at the code real quick. Here's main page.xml. We have our standard navigating to function on the page. Then we have the action bar. We don't really need that. And here we have a list view. A list view is bound to templates. This is data binding syntax, and it's bound to the view model. We also have a tap event on each list item. And all we're doing is just showing label text for each of the items. So if we take a look at main view model, this is pretty simple. In our constructor, we're just creating a loop here for 22 items. Let's make it 30. And we're pushing these items into the items array here. We also have a tap handler that alerts item tapped with the index. So I'm going to save this. It's going to refresh and I'm going to tap on one of these items, tap item tap three, item tap six, and same thing on Android item tap three, item tap eight. So that's our list. Pretty simple. Now, what we want to do is actually create a little fab right here, the floating action button right here on the bottom right. If you've seen my previous tutorial on this, you can still do it that way. But now we have a little bit of a simpler method to doing it. So let's start with main page.xml. Right now we have a list here, but we want our fab button to overlay the list to be on top of the list. And the way we can do that is by using an absolute layout. So we can place the list and the fab inside an absolute layout. So I'm going to wrap the list in an absolute layout layout and let's close that out right down here. Now, when I do that, I'm just going to show you something real quick. I'm going to save it and you'll see that our list is gone. Well, there's one label hanging out over here, but we need to do something in order for this to actually work. So we need to go to CSS. By the way, here I'm setting each label of the list view with a height of 48, just so that's a little bit wider. All right, so I'm going to set my list view CSS and I'm going to need to set the width and the height manually here. So I'm going to set it to 100% for the width 
and for the height. And when I do that, you can see that our list is back. Just because it's when it lives inside the layout, the absolute layout, it doesn't know how big to be. So that that's a little fix for it right there. So we have our absolute layout, we have our list view. Now we need to create the fab that's going to overlay the list view. And I'm going to use a grid layout as my main layout to contain the fab. I'm going to give it an ID. This is going to be button fab. And of course, we're able to tap on this grid layout or our button. So we're going to need to handle that tap. I'm going to create the on button tap handler. And let's close out that grid layout. There we go. Let's go ahead and create this tap handler in the code behind. So I'm going to open up main page dot TS and I'm going to export a function called on button tap, which is going to get some args and some type event data. And here I'm just going to do an alert and I'm going to say button tapped. Let's just say fab button tapped. OK, so we have this grid layout, but it doesn't currently have any kind of look to it. So let's go into our app.css and create a look. I'm going to use the ID here to select it. And I'm going to say button fab. Now, according to the Android material specifications, the fab button has to be a certain height and width. So it's going to be 56 and that's going to be a circle. So 56 height, 56 width. And because we need it to be a circle, it needs to have a border radius and that's going to be half. So 28. All right. I'm I'm also going to set the background color here to orange red, nice and bright so we can see it. Uh, let's save this and check it out. Ah, there it is. Look at that. So on Android, we have a little circle there and iOS, we have a weird shape that's a stretched out circle. And that's because our fab button grid layout right here is actually touching the edge of the page. And on iOS, we have the safe areas. So if a layout touches a safe area, it's automatically going to be stretched out. We don't need to worry about that because we're not going to be touching the safe area once we move the fab to the bottom right corner. How do we do that? Well, we can always go in here and position the grid layout. Let's say top and we can give it an estimated value let's say 400 and we can say left let's estimate it to be 100 this is not right by the way i just want to show you what happens here so if we do that yeah we can guess and we can move the fab around a little bit we can even use percentages to say how far um, for the percentage how far off the screen we want to move it but these are not guaranteed ways because we have different screen sizes so we need to make sure we account for different screen sizes in order to do that we need to position this fab programmatically so i'm going to remove these attributes and i'm not going to do any styling for the positioning but i will get this id right here and i'm going to go in the code behind and position my fab programmatically so when we navigate to this page we have this navigating to handler happen here and we can get a hold of our fab view so i'm going to say const button fab and we can use the page to get the view by id which is called button fab that's this id of that grid layout right here and any kind of view, including layouts, are inheriting from the view class. So I'm going to import view right there and cast this fab as a view. That way in TypeScript, I can just use its properties here. And the properties I need are top. So I need to set the top to something. And I also need to set the left to something. What are we setting this to? Well, we're going to have different size screens that we're working with. So we need to figure out what the size of our screen is. And we can do that using the screen module in the platform that comes with Native script. So I'm going to import screen and that's coming from TNS core modules platform. Let's go down here and for the top, I'm going to say screen, main screen, height, dips. We're working with dips here. These are device independent pixels. If you don't know what those are, you can check out my course on native script styling on nativescripting.com where I discuss the difference between pixels and dips and how to use them. So this will position the fab all the way at the bottom of the screen below the edge of the screen. So we don't want that. So we want to subtract some value here, some number of dips. That way the top is not as big as the entire screen, but it's a little bit less than the entire screen. So let's say 200. And for the left value, I want to say screen, main screen, and then width dips. And let's say minus 80. I'm going to save everything and let's take a look. All right, and there's our fab button. I can scroll my list just fine. And I can also scroll my list here as well. And I can tap on each one of these items. See item tap nine. And I can also tap on the fab separately. It says fab button tapped. Same thing with iOS. I can tap on the list items and I can tap on the button separately. Fab button tapped. Now, one thing you gotta watch out for, let me just go back here and say this grid layout here, which is our fab button. If it doesn't have a tap handler, if I take that off right there, 
and we go back. On iOS, if I tap on the button, nothing happens because my tap stops right there with that view. But on Android, if I tap on the button, if there is no tap event handler there on the button, it's going to fall through to what's under it. And what's under it is the list item. So it says item tap nine. So keep an eye out for that. I'm just gonna undo this. We do have a tap handler there, so we're fine. All right, now inside your fab, you can place anything you want. You can place an icon or an image. I'm just gonna place a plus sign in there. And how do I make a plus sign? Well, you can use an image or I'm going to just create shapes from the native script views that are already available. By the way, I do have a video on how to create shapes right on this channel. You can check that out. So to get a plus sign, I'm going to show you two ways of doing the plus sign here. And this grid layout is going to have two labels. Uh, one is going to be for each line of the plus sign. The first label, we're going to have a class here. Let's give it a class name of fab dash. And it's the first First one, so dash one, and I'm just gonna copy this one. Let's create fab dash two. All right, now let's go back to our CSS and create those styles. I'm just gonna paste this in right here. Here's fab dash one and fab dash two. They are white in color. They have a height of 16 and a width of three. And if I take a look at this now, we just have one line because both of those labels are on top of each other. So we just need to rotate one of them. So I'm gonna say fab dash one, and I'm gonna transform it we're going to rotate it by 90 degrees. Okay, and we're almost there. It's not looking quite right. So let's also translate it down zero to minus two. Okay, that looks a little bit better. And it looks like our plus sign is not exactly in the center vertically there. So you can play around with it to kind of style it to get it working where you need it to be. We can do that by splitting this grid layout here into two rows, for example, rows where the first row takes up two pixels or two dips, I should say, and the second one is auto. And we're going to place these labels, both of them in the second row. So row equals one. This is probably a more complicated way of styling this than is really necessary. I'm also going to give this a class of fab icon. So let's go back to CSS here. And since we know that our fab is actually 16 by 16, I want to limit that fab icon to the height of 16 and a width of 16. So this will recalculate the entire layout system and it should place our icon right in the middle there. There we go. Let me show you a simpler way you can do this plus button. I like to use a tool called Clippy. It's a this URL right here. I've talked about it many times before on this channel. So you can have multiple shapes you pick from here and this will give you a clip path. This is gonna be way simpler. So I've picked this cross to start with and then I just modified these points to adjust them so it looks like a plus. And you can make them wider or thinner like that. And down at the bottom, it shows you exactly what the value is you're adjusting. So I'm gonna copy this clip path polygon value copy and let's go back here instead of having this grid layout all this stuff here in the middle i'm just gonna have a label in here and i'll give it a class lbl plus all right let's go back here and say lbl plus and i'm gonna paste that clip path in there and i also need to give this a background color of white so it stands out all right so there's our plus inside of our fab now we just need to adjust the size of it so let's give it a height of 16 and a width also 16 and there we go much simpler tap fab button tap so you can pick whatever you want as the content of the fab button and there's different techniques for that the main thing is that we've created this little circle and we've positioned it properly overlaying our main content so we're going to take this floating action button that we've just created and we're going to animate it in the next tutorial coming out later this week so make sure you subscribe to this channel and click the little bell so you get that notification about that tutorial coming out let's read some of the comments you left me for the previous video this is about the video called multiple frames in native script tutorial Muhammad Maher says, Yahi, first view and first comment. And as usual, you are the computer magician. Aw, oh, thanks, Muhammad. I really appreciate that. That's pretty quick with the comments there. I thought I had the first comment, but maybe you did. I don't know. Gervais Negrabari says, Alex, thanks for the video. How can this be implemented in NativeScript view? Guess what? That's coming up shortly. I got a video for that as well. It is a little bit different in NativeScript view. You still use frames, but the way you use the frames is a little bit different. So I have a tutorial recorded on that already, and I'll be releasing that shortly. So keep an eye out for that. Thanks for that comment, Gervais. John Sherry says, Alex, wicked good video. I feel like I should be saying this in a British or Australian accent. I don't know why. He says, I might use this in my current project as a sort of bottom nav. That's pretty cool. 
In fact, you're on the right track because I created the bottom nav tutorial shortly after this video. So check that out if you haven't already. Anyways, I desperately need a tutorial on custom dialogues cross platform. I actually plan on creating a custom dialogue tutorial. There's lots of different ways of doing it without using third party libraries. And I'm gonna show you how to do that probably in the next few weeks. A lot of people have asked for a custom dialogue tutorial. So I'll be doing that. Thanks, John. Kranthi Kumar says, thanks, Alex. We are close to bottom sheet. Thanks, Kranthi. George Hita Hurmuz says, how can I use this in native script view? That's coming out soon. Another person asking for native script view tutorial. Nikolai Karolyov says, Alex, thank you, but could tell about navigation by Android back button in this case. Only one frame changes, not both. Hmm. Well, one frame should be changing because we're talking about leaving the bottom frame up while the top frame navigates. That's the idea behind this. Maybe I didn't understand your comment exactly, but maybe you can clarify if uh, the tutorial is not doing what you expect. Thanks, Nikolai. A Bugs Bunny says, Hi, Alexander. Could you please make a tutorial for NativeScript MS Graph plugin? Yes, I know there is an MS Graph plugin that I created a couple of years ago, and I'm sorry I haven't kept up with it because things have been changing so fast on the Microsoft MS Graph side. I haven't really been able to keep up with it, especially the TypeScript declarations over there. That was just crazy. Now, if there's a way to generate that, and I think there is a way to generate TypeScript declarations now based on their API, that would be a lot easier. Uh, so I do think that that plugin requires a little bit more love and an update. Thanks, Bugs Bunny. And CyanJin85 says, Hey, Alex, such a useful technique. It opens up new possibilities regarding UI. I guess this isn't available for Angular, or is it? Well, I answered you in the comment and I said it's not available for Angular, but actually it is. It's kind of a pain to do. It's hard and you don't do it the same way I did it here. You don't use frames. What you use is page router outlets and I may create a tutorial on that as well. So it's not as straightforward, but it is doable. And Multishiv19 Shiva says multiple frames are fun to use, but be careful about this modal related bug for iOS. Be sure to use the topmost frames page to open modals. Shiva is one of the geniuses and he's a NativeScript developer expert. So I appreciate him commenting here. He says that be careful opening modal dialogues from one of the child frames because there's a bug in iOS for that. It's probably being looked at by the NativeScript team, but right now you can only open a modal dialogue from the topmost frame in iOS. All right, folks, thanks for joining me and I will see you next time. Bye.